when a client says he wants you to be a guest on his podcast, you better accept that invitation. My name is Freddie Cruz. Welcome to Cruise Through HTX, a podcast for those who want to learn about the individuals, businesses, and organizations that make the greater Houston area great. Now, I got to tell you, Mike Martin is hands down one of the most interesting people I've met over the past year. He's a client, he's a friend, and I first met Mike when he was recording with another client of mine, Dorothy Gibbons, who is the CEO and co-founder of The Rose, also the host of the podcast, Let's Talk About Your Breasts. What Mike does is beyond extraordinary. You see, He's the inventor of the cooling curve and the heavy-weighted scrub brush, but it gets even better because he uses a portion of the profits to take cancer patients sailing on a yacht through Galveston Bay. You can check him out at CapitalismToCause.com. And what you're going to hear right now is actually my appearance on his show, Everything Why. Please subscribe to his show wherever you get your favorite podcasts. During this conversation, you're going to hear us talking about my transition from radio into owning a media company. We talk about artificial intelligence. We talk about committing to one's passions despite challenges and how it's crucial for making a lasting impact. You're going to love this conversation. So again, please subscribe to Everything Why with Mike Martin and this podcast, Cruise Through HTX, on my website, cruisethroughhtx.com. Hi, I'm Ed Sheeran. This is Bruno Mars. Hey, it's Katy Perry. This is your man, Flo Rida, with Freddie Cruz. This is AJ Mitchell with Freddie Cruz. Freddie Cruz. Freddie Cruz. Yo, let's go pick Mr. 305, and you already know what it is. My name is Freddie, and it's time to cruise through HTX. Today, we have a very special guest, Freddie Cruz, who is the producer of the podcast that I do. Uh, That's what he does. To go back a little bit where I came from, a while back, I always thought that everybody has a voice. Uh, I also think that everybody, everything happens for a reason, right? And so I've never quite understood how we (laughs) cross paths. Uh, I know the journey that we took, but I don't know uh, why it all happened. And actually today it kind of hit me. I was looking at your website again, uh, speak podcast, and uh, it stated that you say that every individual has a voice and uh, and you just want to help them ex- express that. And I think everybody has a perspective, their own perspective, and that makes them, uh, uh, you know, intelligent or a genius in your own way because you have that individual perspective. And then I meet you and you want people to tell their story. And that's what I'm all about. And so uh, it's amazing why we cross. And what's beautiful about you is you really encourage people to do it. So I'm going to, I know that you're a big radio disc jockey here in Houston, uh, or host, and you're an author and you help with charities. I mean, I've seen you do some crazy things with charities. And so, but this podcast thing that you started in wanting to give everybody a voice, tell us about that and why you came up with it and where that's going. All right. Well, first off, thank you so much for being a podcast partner, Speak Podcasting. And yeah, we met through an incredible individual who is a friend of both of us. And that is Dorothy Gibbons, who is the CEO and co-founder of The Rose, also a Speak Podcasting client. Subscribe to Let's Talk About Your Breasts, <laughs> wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> you uh, that's the the radio personality coming coming out and me wanting to promote everybody. But yeah, you know, um, I left... I left Terrestrial radio is what, you know, we call it, the FM, AM radio space. I was never on AM, but I left terrestrial radio at the end of 2021, and um, it was one of those things where I was made an offer I could refuse, and I refused it at the beginning of November, and I had had told my wife, hey, I'm... I'm going to get a job by the end of the year. Don't worry about this, honey. Don't worry about this. Well, uh, what are we doing right now in 2024? You and I are speaking and I am not working within any sort of corporate apparatus. So that should tell you that something did not happen by the end of 2021 and 400 applications, 50 plus rejections. I had a handful of interviews that just didn't pan out. And I determined that uh, I was unhirable, unemployable. And so what, what, what does one do? There are two things one can do. One can can wallow in self pity, and the other can be like, "F this poop! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm just, I guess I'm just gonna hire myself." Yeah. And so I looked at myself in the mirror and was like, "You're hired." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and, but did you did you know that everybody could do this? I mean, because again, it's it's almost like we really need everybody to do it because if everybody tells their stories, you find out how amazing their stories are that things are possible. Because yeah. again, watching you do this, I've learned so much about you. Again, back to the Rose Charity, you did you were the MC the other day. I mean, it, that was incredible. And that's a huge charity. I mean, she packed that place in yeah. and you're part of that. And so you've kind of built this company that really is giving people voices to some really amazing people. So where did that come from? It was twofold. So the last job interview that didn't pan out was with a podcast company. And I was convinced that I would end up producing podcasts um, after I left because I just kind of saw that that was where a lot of stuff was going. I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn looking for jobs. uh, And I just kept seeing within the openings, podcast this, podcast this, show booker, guest booking, production, copywriting. And so I'm like, oh, this is, Mm -hmm. I was doing all of this, but in the top 40 radio game. And so I thought these are easily transferable skills. And so I got this uh, interview with a, with a company that shall remain nameless. And (laughs) it was for, and this is how desperate I was for, for work. It was uh, making about a fourth of what I was getting paid on my best year. And, uh, and wow. l- listen, my, my previous employer, uh, I wish them well. Uh, they took really good care of me and my family. I had, <laughs> I had an amazing bonus structure. I mean, my bonus structure was like a full-time job. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I mean, they, you know, I, I, I harbor no ill will 99% of the time. Uh, but you know, it, it Business is business, and I've learned that owning a business. Um, You have to be indifferent. And so uh, this company, uh, it was for guest booking services, and I didn't get the job. And I was really angry because I'm like, I'm God, I'm humbling myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going for this job that is essentially compared to what I was doing, minimum wage. Yeah. And so then I went, I spent the evening um, that evening on their website, and I'm like, huh. I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can do that. Wait a minute. Why am I not doing that? Yeah. <laughs> and so um, that was really when I when I, when, you know, when I say you know you're hired yeah. and I hired myself. That was the yeah. moment that I decided that this was something that I was going to do. Yeah, and there's a lot of work in it. I mean, because again. I've always, not always, last five years maybe thought about doing a podcast just because, again, I started thinking that everybody has a voice, and I think I have one. I invent things, so I yeah. uh, come across just things that need solutions, and I think we need to hear different solutions because everybody has that different perspective. And so, but, you know, I'm busy doing what I do, and to do a podcast is is work in its own right. It's nerve-wracking <laughs> for me because uh, I'm not comfortable with this. You're good at it. Yeah, really so, good at it. Right, so, but anyway. Uh, not just because you're my client. Yeah. <laughs> you're great at it. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, anyway, uh, back to the real story. And so, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of uh, text that you write. I mean, a lot of Facebook, the social media that you do for us. I mean, again, that would stop me and you do it. And you're really good at it. And that's because you're an author. I Thank mean, you. so, <laughs> I mean, it's so again, so it's almost like this is all fitting together like a plan of some sort. Yeah. That someone behind the scenes put together for you. Is, do you ever feel that? I, you know what I do? And, and it, there's a guy who, and I, I'm almost convinced that I had told you about him, or maybe you read about him in one of my company newsletters. Uh, his name is Alex Hormozzi. Was that a plug? Uh, <laughs> that would have been a good place for one for your <laughs> newsletter to sign up now. <laughs> sign up now for the newsletter. Um, but uh, it's Alex Hormozzi. He's the guy that's in his early to mid 30s, worth hundreds of millions of dollars, mm-hmm. and uh, he has this thing where he is talking about how you are the niche. Be one of zero. In other words, be one of a kind. Mm -hmm. There's no one else like you. You are a niche one out of zero. Nobody else like you. And so to your point, yeah. Um, What what have I done for the, you know, between 1990, who I'm dating myself, 1997 to 2021, I was in the top 40 radio, radio space. Uh, a lot of less is more. In fact, that was one of the big corporations mantras that people hated. They're like, You're, I'm, I want to talk. I'm a radio personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in fact, less is more when you look at 
the attention span of most people. It's mm-hmm. that of a doorknob, if not less. Mm-hmm. Um, so how do I take this, uh, this propensity to uh, speak and write quickly and efficiently word economy and articulate thoughts and do it in such a way that's either entertaining or informative or both or draws on the heartstrings or all three of those, right? (laughs) Uh, And and that is quite the challenge. But if you do that for years and years and years, you get what, you know, you get what they call the 10,000 hours of mastery. Uh And I don't proclaim to be any kind of master of any, I'm a, I'm a master of none, but a student for life. And so it's, Uh it's taken this art of brevity wanting to write a book, but not wanting to write a 500 page book. <laughs> so using that, that propensity to write quickly, uh, a little bit of, you know, what humor I do have, and then taking my love of history and reading and being able to write something that's informative and, uh, somewhat cohesive. And, and, um, yeah, so that's where that's yeah. incorporating all the different things. So as a radio host, as a copywriter, as a producer of sound and, and, and then all also on the side, writing books. I haven't written books, and that's a whole other episode that we can get into. But you know, I, I won't bore you with some of the failures of that. But uh-huh. yeah, that's- <laughs> lessons learned. Uh, so which we all say. Yeah. Uh, but again, you know, you just went through how you want to write it, and that's how I sit in front of my computer for hours and hours and hours trying yeah. to do. Writing is hard. It is. Uh, writing is not an easy thing. And when you invent, you have to write everything. No one can write for you because mm-hmm. you're the one that has to come up with it, right? Yeah. You're you're the originator of it. And so uh, writing is very hard, and you are very good at it. Well, I, thank you. Uh, that uh, means a lot. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, And again, I know that that's a disqualifier for me because if I had to write that stuff, I'd never be able to do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so again, uh, when you when you go to Freddie and you you do this, and I hope everybody does, because again, I think there's something to it. There's more data. If we have more stories from everybody, we find out that we are more alike than we are apart, for sure. Yeah, right. And so, look at the doors that it opens up, and you can learn from each other as well. You can learn from somebody who you otherwise might not might not know. So, in this instance, let's say for whatever reason, I wasn't able to go to the Rose's office the day that you had gone into the studio and you go and I'm still tasked with producing this episode. And I'm like, well, who is this Mike Martin guy? Who, what, what is his backstory? And I'm learning as I listen. Whereas, you know, if I'm just some stranger on the internet who happens to know what the Rose is, and I'm a fan of the Rose and I look at your picture and I look at your granddaughter, Emma, who's a cancer survivor, Mm -hmm. a rare form of cancer, and she beat it Mm -hmm. and you're paying tribute, (laughs) right. And you're paying tribute to her and your family by taking cancer patients sailing across Galveston Bay. And so if I, Look, look, when a stranger looks at your picture with Emma, they don't know the story. Yeah. But then when they hear it, they're like, whoa, yeah. okay, this is not just a man with a little girl. There is something that I can take away from listening to this podcast. And The Rose has put out a, a whole bunch of episodes. Yeah. You are You started in February and you put out... I think about a dozen uh, podcasts. You've talked to some pretty impressive individuals. You got uh, Scott, who's a friend of yours, who's your personal chef, and his story is incredible. Mm. Named his business after his mom. All right, personal chef (laughs) on a boat. (laughs) On a boat. He does for free, so I don't have a personal (laughs) chef because we've eaten beans, both of us. So (laughs) So. The people who are living it don't know the story either. We've lived it, but you really don't know it. I was with Dorothy at the Shrimp Boil the other day, and I... I was just blown away. Every one of those tables in there, and I don't know how many tables, I think 75 or so. It's way bigger than last year. Oh, yeah. And it was full. I mean, it was packed, right? And again, to be able to bring that many people together is just amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And to do what she does, and she's been doing it for 35 years, right? I mean, that's serious. And has the, what, the, the... auctioneer has been doing it for 35 years. How long, how long have you yeah. been doing it? Yeah. yeah, Bear. I've been producing their podcast going on two years. All right. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's just, it's, when I went and talked to her, I said, you know, you did this, you know, this is, 
you did this. And, and it was from the same feeling that you just want to give back. And then it turns into this love that you don't even know because you're just getting people together and making this thing happen. And you don't yeah. even see it, right? Because you're right there. And again, she, oh, I didn't do any of this. It's like, well, yeah, you did. <laughs> this is amazing. And I bow to you because I hope that we can, you know, we all could do that. Because if we all did that, what, have, you know, what could we do, you know? She's so humble. Yeah. She is so humble. Yeah. And it, it's it's incredible when you see someone with that much influence and in, and in, uh, within within her her sphere, yeah. And there's that degree of humbleness. Now you do besides podcasting, and again, you you that leads you into a lot of your guests have charities and stuff that you actually become part of too. You've helped. You're in a number of charities that you do. I've got a media role within a place for peanuts and yes. they're the equine rescue. You interviewed Megan yes. uh, previously on the show. And so I help whenever they need me. And then I do some marketing work for citizens for animal protection. That, that is paid marketing work. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I love cap. It's mm-hmm. also paid, you mm-hmm. know, and if someone would like to invite me to a, a fundraiser or whatever for any cause, I'm game. You yeah. know, I've, I've made no bones about that. That was one of the things that I really enjoyed about, um, about my previous radio career was uh, somebody wanted to invite me to a parade or a 5K walk. And if I had the time, if it was enough notice, mm-hmm. I would... I would go simply because I just like being invited to stuff. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, and that's how, that's how I met Dorothy uh, years yeah. ago. And I always forget if it was 2017 or 2018, which one was the first year that, uh, that I hosted the shrimp boil, but yeah, they, their PR company, Medley Inc. Shout out to Ashley. Yeah. Uh, they sent me an invite to host the shrimp boil. In fact, I think I may have had them on my Sunday morning community affairs show. Uh, and then they invited me to host the shrimp boil and they haven't been able to get rid of me since. <laughs> yeah. So, and again, cause I asked you earlier how many years you've been doing it. You said two on the podcast, but I met the shrimp boil. How long have you been doing that? Since 17 or 18? 17 or 18. Yeah. yeah. That's when I, I came in around 19, I guess. And we did the, I've mm-hmm. done the boat and it's, uh, I didn't go for the first couple of years. Uh, I just started going and, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's that's been amazing. So yeah, because I, I always see you with dogs and, and animals. So you have a love for animals, apparently. So yeah, well, uh, Speak Podcasting is S P E K E, named right. after Sparrow and R I P Zeke. When I when I rebranded the company, it was the name. The name was a DBA that I had been using because going back to what I had said earlier, I had thought. I was going to be within the corporate apparatus doing something involving podcast production or some sort of communications mm-hmm. manager or director. And so the DBA was Freddy Cruz Creative Works. Lame name. No one knows who Freddy Cruz is. And Creative <laughs> Works is a really vague, generalized sort of a thing. And I'm nothing more than a speck of dust in an infinite universe, which may or may not be a part of an infinite multiverse. <laughs> And so I did that for about a year, you know, when I decided to hire myself and about a year in, I'm like, yeah, I've only got like two clients and I wonder why that is. And so after listening to a bunch of different business podcasts and it's like, well, you know, you got to go all in on something. And I'm like, well, the audiobook narration is not working. I lost a client, um, my first client. And I'm like, yeah, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. Um, and I had some freelance work and was trying to do voiceover work as well. And about a hundred, it's another thing about a hundred voice demos in, and I couldn't get any, any, any gigs. And so I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm just going to, but that wasn't hard. That wasn't hard. Uh, it was hard. I'm sorry. It was hard. Yeah, it was hard. I mean, Everything's you're hard. About, you're, you're talking about getting kicked and punched in the teeth. It's like, geez, yeah. come on. I, like saying, I mean, you know, yeah. Everything's hard. Everything's All the hard. Of, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, I, was on, I was about 1.63 miles into my run and was thinking about how I was going to rebrand this horrible company that wasn't doing jack crap. And... Um, I'm like, you know, well, you know, I, I I love podcasting, and what do I love about podcasting? It gives everybody a voice, and you know, who? What is my grand vision for? You know, at the time, I was really just super hyped on uh, the Art of Impossible by Stephen Kotler, and the idea of a multi trans multi 
massively transformative purpose. And I'm like, what's my MTP? It's by the end, by, by my end days, I want to have made a dent in the homeless animal problem in the Houston area. Oh, wow. It's my MTP. Uh, it's going to be hard because people treat animals like garbage, unfortunately, but you yeah, know, I can do. try as much as I can um, to at least right some of the wrongs that our neighbors do. Um, not my actual neighbors. <laughs> Let me be very clear about that. <laughs> I'm at 12, 17. <laughs> very clear. Not my actual neighbors are uh, the PR fellow Houstonians. They're better, better said, right? <laughs> and so I'm thinking, I'm like, oh man, animals speak. Sparrow, Zeke, speak. And then it just, I had to stop running for a second because yeah. I'm like, holy crap, yeah. I got it. Yeah. And I just, you know, I sprinted the rest of my run home and jotted it down. And then I just, that was all I thought of. And then yeah. I went on mid journey and created the AI rendering of the artwork, yeah. which yeah. is the puppy with the, yeah. you know, set against the backdrop of, of what I think. I think it's Houston. <laughs> <laughs> it's artificial intelligence. It's not perfect, but it looks amazing. I yeah. love, no, I yeah. love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's creation, you know? And, yeah. Yeah, and it's when it hits you, it's, it's uh, amazing, fun, exhilarating and something that everybody again should have and i've said before on a pod on one of my podcasts that i think american idol is where i i see god the most when i was watch these kids go in there with talent of course they're singing but they have no confidence and then through the show and all they're doing is getting encouragement and practicing right that's all they're doing and so and uh and some of their criticisms hard and stuff like that but what's been interesting with you and doing this podcast and my growth as even doing this is that's all it is. I mean, again, you just keep pushing me to do the next one. And every time you do the next one, you you go through it. All right, well, I did that one. That doesn't sound, you know, that's okay. And you get a little bit better and better and better and just keep doing it. And you just have this, this joy about trying to get us to believe in ourselves to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what's really cool. And that's something that uh, I don't <laughs> take for a lot of people, but for you, you just done it from the day one. And it's just, uh, it's something that you, I think that's where, why you're getting the success that you're having is because this is hard. Like, like I said, there's nothing easy. I mean, right? and so sitting here yeah. and talking to anybody uh, is hard. So, uh, but to sit here and today I knew it was going to be easier because I knew I was going to at least be talking to you about stuff, right? <laughs> and so, and again, so come in here at this open mind, speak freely, be more yourself like you always are, right? And so, but that's your... 20 years that you did in front of a radio and now you're yeah. just getting to, to help others do that. And so, man, it's, it's cool. Definitely keep that up. And I try to try to this much, I mean, 10%, if I could <laughs> match your enthusiasm on so, cause I get excited and stuff about what I do, but not at encouraging others to, to go. And I wish I could do a little bit better on that. And that's what I work on. With all due respect, I think you do and you just don't realize yeah, it. Yeah, probably. So. Yeah. I think I think you do. I feel as though you do because look at what you look at what you do with Miss Emma's retreat. Yeah. And you're encouraging people who are going through the darkest darkest of the times in their lives. And you're taking them and you're you're out in this boat and you're showing them in more ways than one, you're showing them God's work and God's creation. Yeah. yeah. And there've been many times that um you've told me about that and you've shown me proof of like you know you you show me the dolphins mm -hmm. <laughs> the dolphins yeah, and again, in the heat of the summer that, but, but easier stuff that just again you really have a passion for what you're doing it shows in what you're doing thank you it's it allowed me to come and sit behind a microphone and talk when I never would have done that <laughs> a year ago. But as I always say, you can't write this stuff and you can't write this stuff because you can't write your stuff, right? That is, that is true. <laughs> uh, and, and I think what makes it a lot, what makes it easier is that this is only a mic and that's only a camera. And these are only lights behind the camera that nobody can see. Uh -huh. This is only soundproofing. And uh, there's no crowd of people that we can see looking at us or mm -hmm. not paying attention to us because maybe they're checking Facebook for the 27th time in the past yeah. hour. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just you talking into a tool 
and talking to a tool. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, yeah. you know, it, it's just you and the mic and the guest, or in some cases, it's just you and the mic yeah. because you do have some solo episodes uh, that are amazing, by the way. Yeah. But, um, you know, these are just tools and, and, and I feel like we are m- merely conduits for, for something. For, uh, you know, again, God that. putting us to work. It's, yeah, but data, right? I mean, because yeah. again, the more we know, the better we are. And, you know, you get AI and stuff. I've, you know, how I work with AI on writing things and asking it to, what do you think about this, right? And uh, again, who knows what it's giving you back, but it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of dig it. And so, uh, but I, I say everybody in the whole world put together a paragraph or two paragraph on their life, right? Yeah. Like you said, with those exactly the way you, the short, sweet, funny, but your life, but that shows the tragedy and, you know, shows, gives us a taste of what you are and put that into AI. Everybody does it and then have an AI because we can't read everybody's. If there's 8 billion people, it's going to take 52,000 years to read that many people's <laughs> books. Let's say if it was a book, that's what it was. I put into Google. Yeah. If everybody wrote a book and it was, you know, 250 pages or something like that, yeah. uh, how long would it take to read everybody's book? Right. So we could have the true perspective of the world, mm-hmm. right? We've got everybody's opinion. Right. And so it'd take 52,000 years. So that's not possible. So, you know, surely God wanted us to know all the information. I mean, we just don't use our brains right, I don't think. So since we have AI coming, everybody write a paragraph on what's up and be as honest as you can, put it into AI and let it give it the synopsis on everything. I mean, the yeah. color it could give us. I mean, the information we could get from that would be insane, right? So I've been on this perplexity.ai kick. I don't use chat GPT anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, perplexity is Microsoft's answer to chat GPT. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, if I remember to do it, First thing in the morning, I will journal my dreams. Oh wow! And ask it wow. <laughs> to analyze, and you're a serial killer, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, I I had a wild, wild oh dream about my grandma, and she's deceased. She died back in 2016. But I had Told a, you. for some reason I was selling beauty products. And from afar, and I was selling beauty products at a store that was Can't connected to, stuff. right. It was connected to a senior <laughs> living place. And so I walk out of the store and I see her from across a courtyard where she's got a dog. Everyone's got dogs. She's never owned dogs. She didn't really like dogs, but she loved my dog, Zeke. And so I see her from afar and she gives me a thumbs down. And as I approach her in the dream, she starts smiling and talking while her teeth are gangly, <laughs> horrible, like yellow brown, like, uh, like, I don't know, you, like she was from like Kentucky that. or something. No offense if you're from Kentucky, but I had perplexity analyze the dream and it was like, yeah, you're concerned about miscommunication and your grandmother represents an authority that uh, that you wish that you seek approval from, and this could be your wife, or it could be uh, one of your clients, or your clients as a whole. And so I'm like, okay, it all makes sense. So the people in your dreams don't necessarily matter. It's it's uh, who they are and what they represent. So if you were to let's say dream about your parents, you know, they it's not so much about your parents so much as it's about them being an authority figure in your life. So that can represent something, mm-hmm. um, which is just, it's a whole other rabbit hole, man. Well, I'm, t- I'm all- telling you, no, <laughs> yeah, no, AI is, uh, is crazy for sure. I do, Claude, and I don't know what that is, right? I don't know the difference between chat, GBT. I just dabble with Claude, and it sends me back to some just crazy stuff. So Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's interesting, you know, and so we're going that way. Yeah. It's, yeah, we're already there. I mean, hell, Google <laughs> is is AI, right? We've yeah. been Googling for 10 years, 20 years, whatever, however long, and that is AI, right? Yeah. <laughs> Finding the stuff we're looking for. So yeah. we can put that two and two together. So, well, cool. You have anything? I think you have a birthday party. Do you have one year in this operation? The first of many, year two, we're, we're going full throttle. Uh, whereas in the second half of the fiscal year, we launched three shows, including yours. 
Mm-hmm. There was, there's yours, there's Dr. Angela Sturm, facial plastic surgeon. Mm-hmm. There's uh, Lindell Johnson, who's the owner of Real Property Management. So he's got high-end homes handled right. So in the second half, launching three shows, right? Fiscal year one. In the quarter, in the first quarter of fiscal year two, launching three shows. All right. So that, that just kind of, you know, we're... It's, what's the thing in, in business where you, you want to grow, but if you grow too fast, it actually ends up being sort of a curse? Is that? Uh, yeah, careful what you wish for, I, I guess. I, but yeah, right? no, I that's, mean, the, that's the fear. But, uh, you know. I think you always find a workaround. Yeah, right? I've, I've never seen it. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sure, I'm like, sure, I'd like to have that problem. I but, would like to have that problem uh, too. But there uh, is, there is <laughs> things that you have to watch out for. I mean, yeah. there's definitely things that you watch out for. And, you know, I almost think it goes on its own path anyway. I mean, you, yeah. when you start doing things, you're digging. If you just let things go, it just will happen the way that yeah. it happens all natural. So, yeah, because look how this has unfolded. I mean, now we're in chairs. You know, like in a studio <laughs> chair and it was like that, you know, two weeks ago, I had no idea I was walking in. I had my, my whole mindset. And again, I'm all about quieting your mind and things like that and not projecting on what a situation is going to be. Well, I was going to be all open and cool today and come in and sit at my little desk like we had before. And I come in and it's this. So, <laughs> so, so again, uh, we know nothing of what's coming at us. We think we do. We know where the meeting is. We know whatever. But you have no idea what's about to happen. And we think we do. Everybody thinks that we, we got a plan on what's coming next. And we just don't. So, uh, so I guess you can't write this stuff. And so uh, I know that your party's tomorrow night. Uh, going to have some pretty cool people there. Yeah. I'm, I'm going. I can't wait to, to meet everybody. And uh, to hear their stories, I know Dorothy, I mean, she just loves you to death. And uh, again, she filled that room and <laughs> to have her loving you to death is pretty, <laughs> is pretty dang cool. Yeah, likewise, uh, man. Because you go through a, uh, you go through a, you meet a lot of people that, uh, you know, over the years and the ones that stay close and keep doing this stuff are the ones that got the blood in it, right? And they're the ones that make it happen and uh, that make the dream all possible, right? And so uh, I know where she comes from. So uh, anyway, uh, well, again, it's this has been amazing <laughs> as always. It was a lot more comfortable than most uh, shows. And so uh, don't know why I said that, but I would say go to speak podcasting and that's s p e k e podcasting.com yeah all right any other no other things you want to say or uh just thank you for being a podcast partner and uh here's to many more episodes by the way uh they say 90% of podcast hosts never make it past episode 3 and of the remaining 10% 90% of them never make it past episode 20 and so you're already a top 10% podcaster and you're about to be like, what is it? One tenth of one, or you're going to be a 1% podcaster very soon based on your trajectory. Yeah. And so all you got to do is keep going. No, we're trying. Yeah. So we have enough to talk about and, with the way the world's going. Yeah. So uh, that's the mantra though. You keep going. Oh no, yeah. Because no. if you quit, if you quit and that goes with anything, I'm not just talking about podcasting now, but if you quit anything, it's any done. Endeavor, it's done. You're, you're yeah. guaranteed failure. Yeah. No, guaranteed. The, the only way the dream dies is if you quit period, you know? And so uh, I don't know again, what part of the dream this is in my life, the podcast, but I do think that we just need to everybody needs to slow down and and just look at what's happening in life and just start doing things that work as opposed to things that don't work because we do a lot of things that don't work and uh again borders that just people pour in on that doesn't work there's no way in the world you can talk that into working uh national debts that doesn't work uh mopping that's a good one that one doesn't work (laughs) Uh, so, and again, hating neighbors, that doesn't work, you know, uh, beating dogs, that doesn't work. Definitely right? not. I mean, again, there's no good in that. What's the positive in a beating a dog? There's just not a horse or anything or starving it to death, you know? And so, but at the same time, you got to understand why people would do that to start off with. Right. And that's where shows like this come in. If we get everybody to talk about 
their lives, whatever, and even the things who do go wrong. Let's come on and talk about the bad things that happen so we can learn. You know, with our judicial system, we never learn anything on anybody who kills anybody. How about we really go find out why they're doing it, you know? Yeah. And so, and maybe they do, but I don't know anything about it. I mean, are we shielded from getting that information? You know, because again, I think that the more information that we have, that's what AI is all about. And that's why mm-hmm. it's going to be so powerful. The more information we have, the better off we are. Right. And the information flows through this microphone into something to where it can be put out to where people can listen to it. Because mm-hmm. without it, we stay in the same boat we're in. Yeah. Right. The one constant in life is change. That's the, uh, I mean, again, I was driving home, saw the clouds, cloud formations change at all times. So there's nothing in our universe that's the same ever. Nothing. Right. Nothing in your life, nothing in your body, nothing ever is the same. It's always change. But all of our rules of society are all rigid. And so how can you live with that, with changes in a rigid world? And so I think there needs to be some bending in things and to make it more adaptable to everybody. And if not, at least an alternative to the stuff that's not working now, because it's not working now. Nope. So we'll get there. Yeah. Oh, no, Hopefully. no, I definitely believe it will. <laughs> and it's through podcasts and it's through Speak Podcasting and with a guy who encouraged you to do it and uh, put a lot of work into it to make you look good. So, thank again, you. thank you tons for uh, all that you've done and helping me as well. So, thanks for coming. Appreciate you, sir. Mm-hmm.